Hey, it's Will. In this video, we're going to finish up our volume control plugin. We were just evaluating it in the last video and we were testing the volume control slider here and we have the volume control slider working. And so the rest of uh, this video, we're going to connect the, the rest of the guts of the plugin all up. So I'm going to close this out now. We'll get rid of this guy. And um, let's take a look at the code. I want to talk about a couple of things before we connect in the rest of the plugin code. One of those is how the channels are set up. In the constructor of the plugin is where you declare your supported channel combinations. When you create an ASPIC plugin project, you get an automatic setup for three of the most common combinations. Mono in, mono out, mono in, stereo out, and stereo in, stereo out. You use this function add supported IO combination. It has an input and an output field here. So each of these is an input output pair. Um, we have mono in, stereo out, stereo in, stereo out. You could have 5.1 in, 5.1 out. You could have 5.1 in, stereo out for a fold down plugin, etc., etc. You can right click on these and say go to definition, and you can see many, many more multi channel formats that are defined for ASPIC already. And these include 7.1 DTS and Sony. The, uh, the total number here is not the complete number supported by all of the APIs, AAX, AU, and VST. Instead, this is the intersection of all the ones that are commonly supported by all three of those APIs. I spent a long time thinking about it, and I didn't want to have a combination that might work in one API and not in another because it might make you have the opinion that the plugin is broken. So if you want to use a um, really bizarre ambisonic format that only AAX uses, you can do that. You'll just need to work on that in the AAX shell uh, code instead. So this is going to take care of 99% of your issues. If you're a grad student doing some kind of bizarre 32 channel multi audio, then we can definitely do that. But it's going to take a little bit of tweaking on your end. And I can help you with that if you contact me through the website. So that's where uh, this happens. When we get the audio uh, process audio frame call, that happens right here. And we're passed in a structure called process frame info. And the process aim info structure contains a bunch of information about uh, the frame. It's right here in the documentation. We are, are going to get four um, arrays, two, uh, one audio input array, one audio output array, and then an auxiliary audio input and output array. The aux audio input is used for side chaining. The aux audio output is not used at all. Uh, and I don't know of a, a, an API that uses it, to be honest. But it's in there just in case. The audio input frame is where our main audio is going to come in. There's going to be one, chample, one, one sample for each channel. And they'll be indexed with array notation. Um, array slot 0 is the left channel, and slot 1 is the right channel, and so on. We will also get information about the number of audio input and output channels, as well as the exact configuration. Remember that for some of our configurations, like 7.1, there's actually a, um, a definition of Sony 7.1 versus DTS 7.1. And so those are two different configurations. So we'll use that information to figure out what kind of audio is coming into process audio frames. And then we'll process the audio frames accordingly. So this is what I've got going on over here. Here's what we had. Now at the end of the very last video, we had this setup. We had calculated the cooked volume value in the update parameters function, and we were just brute force applying that to all inputs and scaling that to make all outputs. I'm going to remove that code now, and we're going to replace it with volume variables that are set up for the left channel and the right channel individually. We need left and right volume variables to, to make our stereo left and right channel selector work. And so that's what's going on here. And I'm going to cut and paste some code that I have gotten right out of the SDK here. It's in the audio signal processing chunk. And I'm just going to cut and paste this volume left, volume right code right out of here. So I've cut that and I've pasted it in. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uncomment that to that. 
And so let's talk about that very briefly. We've got two volume variables left and right. They're initialized to whatever the cooked value is. And we need to evaluate our, um, our enumerated value here, channels. We know that channels is going to come in from the GUI and it is going to be either 0 or 1 or 2, depending on whether it's stereo, left or right. And we need a, a way to evaluate the channels here against that number, 0, 1, or 2. And we need to do it in a way that's going to be safe, meaning we don't want to evaluate it against strings. And once we get very long enumerations, then it's really going to be a pain to remember 0, 1, 2, 3. That's why I use the strongly typed enumeration here. I've written some macros. One of them is called compare int to enum. You pass, pass it the integer value and the enumeration to compare it against, in this case, channels enum colon colon stereo, which is that value in my enumeration. And if they uh, compare out properly, you get a true. If not, you get a false. So that's what this code is doing. I'm comparing channels with stereo. If it is stereo, I'll set volume left and right to the cooked values. <clears throat> if it's left only, I will set the left volume to cooked and the right volume to zero. And if it's the right channel only, I will set the left volume to zero and the right volume to cooked. If the, if the uh, enable mute switch is turned on, which is here, that supersedes everything. And if mute is on, all volumes go to zero. So now I have two different output volumes, one for left and one for right. And I'm going to use those in the code here. So for mono in, mono out, I'll take the left input, multiply it times the left volume variable, and write that to the left output. For mono in, stereo out, I will take volume left times the left channel, and then I will take volume right times the left channel and write those out to left and right here, output frame 0 and 1. And then finally, I will do the same thing here, volume left and volume right, like that. So now I've got all of my logic wired up. I'm, I'm making comparisons with my channels enumeration here to get stereo left right. I've got the the mute switch which is either going to be a zero or a one. I've got that logic controlling my um, muted volume variables here and then I've got the actual signal processing code where I'm multiplying my input samples by that volume variable. I'm going to go ahead and build that uh, here and I'm going to uh, relaunch uh, logic. Okay, so here is the um, logic session that we've got, and I'm going to reload the plugin. And go to our generic controls here. And I'm going to do a test right now for uh, mute and channels. Okay, so there's the volume slider. Let's do left and right. And I'll do mute. Okay, so this means that we've got everything hooked up and connected. Our audio signal processing is working. We need to do one more thing, and that is add the VU meter code. So I'm going to do that now, and then in the next video, we will actually design the GUI for it. So our VU meter uh, is a variable here, float VU meter. And all we need to do is assign audio signals to it. So it takes an audio signal on the range of minus one to plus one, and it will meterize it internally. So for the mono in, mono out, I'm just going to send the left output channel to the meter. And then I'm going to do the same thing for mono in, stereo out, because left and right are going to be the same. And then for stereo in, stereo out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge the two. 0 0.5 times the left sample, and then I'm going to add 0 0.5 here, whoops, times the right sample here. So this is going to merge the VU meter uh, variables together, and we'll, we will go ahead and design the GUI and get the VU meter connected and tested in the next video.